The 2002-2003 IPFW women's basketball team takes to the court for the preseason game today as they entertain Hillsdale College. Hi everybody, I'm Mike Miles. Welcome once again to IPFW Basketball. I'm joined by Dave Scouton and Doc. IPFW 4-23 last year, they brought in a lot of new people. Well, we have more new freshmen this year than we had victories last year. So we're looking for a good thing this, this year around. Their opponent today, Hillsdale, 23 and 8 last year. They made it to the uh, regional play of NCAA Division II, a tough opponent. Yeah, they won an opening game last year in the NCAA and then lost their second game. So it should be a good ball game. Each team has a couple of exciting players for Hillsdale. They have a senior guard, Stephanie Hyde, averaging 17 and a half points a game and six and a half rebounds. IPFW led by junior Amy Gerald's at 15 and a half points a game and senior forward Tiara Dudley, nine and a half points a game and five and a half rebounds. Ought to be an exciting game, IPFW and Hillsdale College, and it's coming up next right here on College 56 Sports. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Hilliard Gate Sports Center here on the campus of IPFW. This is Mike Miles along with Dave Scouton getting ready to call the action in today's women's basketball game featuring the Chargers of Hillsdale College and the IPFW Mastodons. At this point, let's turn it over to the PA announcer for the uh, starting lineups of today's game. Also a guard of 5'3", senior from Flushing, Michigan, number 12, Mary Wiesen. At center, a 6'1", senior from Dexter, Michigan, number 32, Caitlin Kennedy. At forward, a 6'0", junior from Reed City, Michigan, number 35, Betsy Gerald. And at forward, a 5'11", senior from Grand Rapids, Michigan, number 21, Jen Newsom. Head coach of the Chargers is Claudette Charney. She's assisted by Kendra Harris and Sue Pitts. And now the starters for your IPFW Mastodons. At guard, a 5'8 sophomore from Lebanon, Indiana, number 10, Courtney Nicely. At guard, a 5'10 junior from Beach Grove, Indiana, number 44, Amy Gerald. At center, a 6'2 freshman from Scipio, Indiana, number 15, Ashley Elmore. At forward, a 5'10 freshman from Leo, Indiana, number 33, Lindy Carey. And at forward, a 5'10 senior from Cincinnati, Ohio, number 31, Tiara Dudley. Head coach of the Dons is Bruce Patterson. He's assisted by Chris Paul, Kurt Patterson, and Alan Buck. Well, you've had the introduction of the starting lineup. She just got a shot there of the IPFW Brain Trust, Bruce Patterson, head coach in his second year as the head coach at IPFW, and his assistants, Chris Paul, Kurt Patterson, and Alan Buck. Dave Scouton, as we said today in the opening, IPFW, a very young team, only, uh, you want to call it technically four players back from last year, yeah. three and a half, um, eight freshmen. That's a young basketball team. They are young, and they will be trying all kinds of things, I'm sure, here early in the season. You know, Mike, it was uh, awfully nice of the weatherman, wasn't it, to give us some winter here at the beginning of the basketball season? The true feeling of basketball, that's, that's for right. sure. Starters are on the court. IPFW in the home white. Hillsdale, black with blue and white trim. Referee Dan Morgan tosses the ball up. We're underway. And IPFW has the opening possession. Amy Gerald's the senior, left hands it up and in. Nice move down the lane. A lot of good ball movement by the Dons during that first possession. 2-0 our score, just underway. Chargers move the ball on the perimeter. Three-point shot up and in by Betsy Gerald. Six-foot junior who uh, shot that three-pointer like she's been doing it all her life, didn't she? Sure looked like it. Back come the Mastodons. Andy Carey, the freshman out of Leo High School. Courtney Nicely in the lane, stops, pops, and hits. Courtney Nicely, a sophomore, played very well coming down the stretch last year. Three shots combined in this game and three baskets. So uh, 
these gals are going to get the thing done today. Chargers with the basketball. Initially, Dave, they could move it on the perimeter. Both teams opening up with a man-to-man -man defense. Three-point shot missed by Stephanie Hyde, rebounded by IPFW. Here come the Dons on the run. Lindy Carey up and in. IPFW on the gate pass. Continue the hot hand. Three for three. Let's hope it holds. And they force the turnover down in the corner with the full court press. We've played uh, just over a minute and a half here at the Hearty Gate Sports Center. IPFW on top, six to three. It'll be a Mastodon basketball, I believe. Amy Gerald will inbound it. There's a bit of a set on the inbounds, but no play forthcoming. Tiara Dudley misses. Fight for the rebound controlled by Hillsdale. Tiara gives us a good, strong presence on the inside. Nice feed inside from behind the Gerald. Basket is good, and we've got a foul called on Tiara Dudley. Her first team first. Betsy Gerald. Six foot junior that's pretty active so far in this game. Has all six Charger points. We are tied at six at the 18 minute mark here in the first half. Dave, I think this will definitely be an up-tempo game. Amy Gerald's off the glass and in. Nice drive to the basket, this time coming in from the right side. Amy, a junior, leading scorer in last year's IPFW team, averaged nearly 15 and a half points a contest. She has four so far here in the early going. Don's up by a deuce. Whistle traveling call. What a strong Michigan presence in this game today, Mike, because two of uh, IPFW's new freshmen are from Michigan, Lansing and uh, the Dearborn area. And then we've got Hillsdale here with a lot of the young ladies from Michigan. Well, they could just call it a subdivision of Indiana if There you, you go. <laughs> the northern <Yeah>. subdivision. <laughs> Inside feed to Dudley from Gerald's. Nice pass, Amy Gerald for Tiara Dudley, and the senior from Cincinnati gets her first two points of the afternoon. Again, a nice, strong move inside. 10-6 our score, IPFW on top. Hillsdale with the basketball. Both teams offensively move the ball very well. Give and go, shot up and in by Mary Wieson, number 12, 5'3", senior. Mary happened to be in the right place at the right time on that basket. Nearly a steal on the left side. Ball knocked out of bounds. So far, Dave, IPFW five of six from the floor. Hillsdale three of four. And they've been good shot selection by both teams. Well, we got a whistle and we got a foul going to be called on Hillsdale. Referee. Fouls on Courtney nicely, her first, I'm sorry. Um, it's on Stephanie Hyde, Hyde her first. For Wrong Hills number Dale. 10. Yep. <laughs> Another whistle, three second call. Call on IPFW. That's a tendency earlier in the year when the offensive set gets to moving and somebody uh, gets a little impatient by standing in the lane. IPFW with the uh, token trap here. Chargers break it, get it across midcourt. Stephanie Hyde, he said leading scorer for Hillsdale last year. Baseline jumper missed, but rebounded up, missed again by Jen uh, Newsome. It was a nice follow by Hillsdale and uh, the ball out of bounds. Substitutions for IPFW, number 40, Geneva Murdoch, six-foot freshman out of Northside High School. And number 42, Vieira Bibbs, a six-foot sophomore who saw some action last year. So IPFW will be a little bit shorter with this combination of five players. Ball thrown away by uh, Wieson for Hillsdale. It'll be uh, IPFW basketball. Second turnover on the Chargers. And Courtney nicely brings it up. 
Murdoch pass for uh, Bibbs knocked away. And Bibbs oh, retrieved by Vieira Bibbs. Bibbs stick two to miss on the part of the Dons. Carey driving it inside the paint. Ditches off to Bibbs, and we get a whistle and a traveling call on Vieira Bibbs. And we have our first media timeout of the afternoon. The under-16 timeout comes with 15.45 left. Our score, IPFW 10, Hillsdale 8. You're watching IPFW Basketball on College 56 Sports. Welcome back everybody to the Hilliard Gates Sports Center here on the campus of IPFW. Mike Miles, Dave Scout, with you. And Dave, we played uh, four minutes and 15 seconds and uh, these two teams are, are in mid-season form shooting-wise. Yeah, they've, uh, they've had a nice pace to the game and here goes Amy Gerald in one of her drives to the basket. One of five uh, field goals that IPFW has scored out of six attempts. So if they can keep that up, they're going to be awfully tough. 83% from the floor for yeah. IPFW. Hillsdale, three of six for 50%. IPFW coming out now with their full court press. Hillsdale inbounds it. And it's stolen by IPFW. Amy Gerald takes it inside, misses the shot, but she's fouled and she will go to the line and shoot two. Referee Dan Morgan says the foul was on Betsy Gerald. Her first, team second. So Amy Gerald, the pride of Beach Grove High School, will go to the line. Amy's a good scorer, good free throw shooter. 72% shooter last year. Hits the first one. She now has five points. Make it six, nothing but net. And the Dons are up 12-8. Back on the Chargers. Three-point shot on the way, up and in by Jen Newsom. Her first points of the afternoon. Senior player, she should be uh, giving them a lot of good leadership. Amy Gerald's for three. Amy Gerald's already nine points, nine out of the 15 IPFW points. And it's 15-11, Don's on top. Hyde looking for somebody. Charges working around the perimeter. Stephanie Hyde just inside the three-point arc, off the rim, no good. Geneva Murdoch with the rebound for IPFW. Don's on the run. With that last dead ball, uh, there was a substitution for IPFW. Hillary O'Connell is into the game, number 22. From Warsaw High School. New zone for three, in and out, no good. Bibbs with the rebound for IPFW. Good block out by Vieira Bibbs that time. Nicely commits the turnover, ball bounces off her foot. Yep. Third turnover for IPFW. Another substitution for IPFW, number 13, Jenny Green. She's one of those Michiganders, uh, freshman out of Lansing Catholic High School. Substitution also for uh, Hillsdale. Number 22, Two. Betsy Bean in yep. the lineup. Newson forces it up. No good, but she's fouled, and she'll go to the line for two. Fouls on Vieira Bibbs, her first. Team second. Going to the line, number 21 in black, Jen Noonson. She's a 5'11 senior. Rattles the cage, comes down. Got a nice bounce. Shooter's roll on that shot. Noonson, last year an 83% free throw shooter. Swishes the second one. She now has five points and it's 15-13 as we near the 14 minute mark. Pass knocked out of bounds by Noonson. 
It'll last, be Mastodon basketball. Last two or three times down, IPFW's been a little antsy with the ball and uh, been a little careless. Gerald inbounds it. O'Connell on the horn. Murdoch for three. Off the iron, no. Hyde with a rebound and she's knocked down. Foul, I believe, on Vieira Bibbs. Yeah, I think she picked up number two. Her second team third. One thing I do notice, though, Dave, in the early going, aggressiveness underneath by IPFW. Yeah, in fact, aggressiveness um, up and down the court. And it looks like they're going to play a lot of people. Shot by Betsy Bean off the iron, no good. Rebound at IPFW. O'Connell, cross-court pass to Geralds. Off the rim, no good on a three. Bibbs with the offensive rebound. Spin move, reverse layup, up and in. Nice move inside to get the rebound first and then to put it back up. Excellent move. 17-13, Don's lead is four. Chargers break the press. Stephanie Hyde. Ball knocked out of bounds. Pass intended for Newso and knocked away by Bibbs. It'll be Charger basketball. 14 in the shot clock, 13-21 in the first half game clock. Can't leave her open. Shot is short, but rebound Wieson. Another chance for Hillsdale. Stephanie Hyde finally takes a shot, left hands it up and in. And, and Bruce Patterson says enough of this, we're gonna call a timeout. 13-10 left. Barbara Bueller Lines is curator of the Georgia, Georgia O'Keefe Museum. And Lines this coming Thursday evening, November the 21st, 7.30 p.m. in the Wob Student Ballroom at IPFW. Admission and parking in the B lots is free to the public. IPFW shooting, Mike, has uh, come back to earth just a little bit, but they're still 7 out of 10, which is excellent. Now they come back now. Jenny Green brings the ball up over midcourt. Gee, or Amy Jones rather lost her footing. O'Connell looking for somebody. Baseline drive, cut off. Eight in the shot clock. Green. Gerald's two on the clock. Loose ball. Wieso and IPFW is going to get a break. <laughs> Are they ever a desperate Good shot. defense by Hillsdale. But Betsy Bean's going to be called for the personal foul. Her first team third. And Amy Gerald's with the break gets to go back to the line to shoot two. Amy on the day is three for three so far. First one is good. Boy, that was great defense by Hillsdale. Cut off the baseline on two different uh, occasions. And uh, for 29 of the 30 seconds, it was great. The second free throws missed. Rebounded by Bean. Here comes Hillsdale. Hillsdale has quick guards. They get the ball down quickly. They see the people underneath and on the wings. Move the ball. They were 23 and eight last year. Members of the uh, GLIAC, Great Lakes uh, Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. Shot up and missed by Hyde. And she's called for an offensive foul. Her second, team fourth. Here Bibbs uh, held her ground and drew the charge. So here comes IPFW in the home white, leading 18-15 as we near the 12 minute mark. O'Connell from downtown, swish. Freshman from Warsaw on the board with her first points of the day. Back comes Hillsdale. Newsome in the paint, off the glass, no. Rebounded by Murdoch. IPFW on the run. Jenny Green looking each side of the wing. Gerald's for three. That was from downtown. No good. Bibbs underneath. Put back up and in. Yes. Second offensive put back by Vieira Bibbs. And now Hillsdale calls a timeout. Yeah, IPFW has opened up a 23-15 lead here all of a sudden with, uh, again, continuing hot shooting. 
Let's take a quick break. 23-15 our score, IPFW on top. This is IPFW basketball on College 56 Sports. What's the first thing that comes to mind when someone says they're an engineer? On this month's edition of Up Close, we're going to get rid of all the old stereotypes and see how engineering can be fun. We'll be talking with two professors and an outreach coordinator to see how easy it is to get children interested in engineering at a young age. Join me, Jeanette Liu, for Up Close Sundays at noon on College Cable Access Channel 56. Back to the action here, Hillsdale trailing IPFW by 8, 23-15. Stephanie Hyde takes it to the hole and knocks it down. The defense that time did not close uh, the lane off and she took it unmolested. Four points for Hyde, it's now 23-17. Jenny Green for three, no good. Whistle underneath. Pushing foul gonna be called on Hillsdale. Jen Nusso picks it up, her first team fifth. And we have a media timeout called. This coming with 11.16 left in the half. Learn more about Mastodon Sports in season by tuning into Mastodon Spotlight each Friday evening here on College 56. The hour starts off with yours truly, Mike Miles, reviewing the week's sports activities. We look at game footage and talk with coaches and players. That's Mastodon Spotlight, Friday evenings at 6 and again at 8 p.m., except on game nights, right here on College 56. Well, there's IPFW cheerleaders, hard at work. Doc, IPFW, uh, and Yosdell, they like to play a run-and-gun game as we look at a uh, replay here. Yeah, they like to go up and down. They also uh, like to take the three, and they're not bashful about it on, on either side of the ball. That was Hillary O'Connell, the 5'8 freshman from Warsaw High School. IPFW likes the fast-paced game, up and down the court, pressure defense, uh, and we're seeing the results of having more people available to play this year uh, with a longer and stronger bench than they uh, had last year. Well, in that last couple of years, we've only had eight or nine available players. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see a, a boatload here. It'll be Mastodon basketball underneath their own basket. Jenny Green, number 13, will inbound it. Looking, looking, gets it out to O'Connell. Inside, Bibbs, the recipient of the pass that I think was intended for Murdoch. Yeah, tip pass that uh, but you have to hand it to Vieira. She was alert. She was ready. She's got a half a dozen. Hyde comes back, misses the bunny. Put back up and in by Caitlin Kennedy. Her first points of the afternoon. And it's 25-19. The IPFW lead is six. Hillsdale seems to have dropped back into a zone defense now for the last couple of possessions. Nicely. Tocano for three, in and out, no. Rebounded by Kennedy for Hillsdale. Outlets to Wieson, here come the Chargers. Stephanie Hyde thought about the three, kicked it back out instead. Inside pass for Kennedy, knocked away by Bibbs to nicely. Good defense there, Vieira Bibbs. Yeah, good body control to tip the ball away and not be called for a foul. Courtney nicely drives baseline. We got a whistle underneath. Three second call on IPFW. Amy Gerald is back in and uh, Lindy Carey for the IPFW Mastodon. As is Ashley Elmore, 6'2 freshman. Yeah. A little bit of height, something the Dons lacked last year. And keeping people fresh. Nicely nearly came up with the steal. Wieson brings it up over the timeline. Whistle underneath. Amy Gerald, maybe. Nope. We're going to call it Elmore for the foul. Her first, team fourth. Holding in the lane. Chargers a win bounded underneath their own basket. Stephanie Hyde looking for somebody. Gets it up top to Wieson. Now we got to follow the other way. See what uh, referee Annie Timmons says. Offensive 
foul can be called on Caitlin Kennedy, her first, team sixth. One more, and IPFW will be in the one and one bonus. Yeah, and it's only about to a little bit past the midpoint of the first half. 9.48 and counting. Don's up by six, 25-19. Amy Geralds for three off the front of the rim, no. Ball knocked out of bounds. They say last touch by IPFW. It'll be Hillsdale basketball. And again, uh, Doc, IPFW playing at full court pressure defense. Yeah, they're keeping the pressure on defensively and being very aggressive offensively. 1-2-2. Two, two. Wieson to Stephanie Hyde. Back up top. Inside pass for Kennedy. Nice move by Caitlin Kennedy. Nice pass inside. No, no weak side help on the defense that time, and it made it tough for uh, Ashley. Four points for Kennedy. Lindy Carey for three. No good. Elmore with the putback. No good. Gerald's tries it. No good. Loose ball picked up by Stephanie Hyde. Don's had three cracks at it. Couldn't knock it down. Here comes Hillsdale back. Hyde from downtown. Nothing but net. And all of a sudden, that eight-point lead is down to one. The shooting for uh, Hillsdale has picked up considerably here in the last. Stephanie Hyde with uh, seven points now. Nicely misses the shot, but Gerald's and Carey combined to keep possession. Now they're going to call alternate possession, and it will go to Hillsdale with 8.36 left in a half. So the Chargers are going to inbound it, and if they can make a shot, they have to call a timeout. Good defense by IPFW. 30-second timeout called by Hillsdale. Let's take a break. You're watching IPFW Basketball on College 56 Sports. I really wanted to go for an Indiana University business degree. But with housing and tuition, it really adds up, and the money just wasn't there to go away to college. And with a two-year-old, my housing options were kind of limited anyway. And the truth is, I really wanted to keep my job and stay close to home. Going to IPFW made all of that possible. IPFW? the best choice I ever made. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. The right school, right here, right now. Welcome back everybody to the Hilliard Gate Sports Center. Mike Maz, Dave Scouting with you. 8.36 left in the first half. IPFW hanging on to a uh, one point lead, 25-24. Hillsdale with the ball. Among other things in the last couple of minutes, Mike, uh, IPFW shooting has tailed off. One shot was blocked by Elsmore. Chargers had two more cracks at it, couldn't convert. Now here comes IPFW on the run. Gerald's to Carey. Carey is going to be fouled. Caitlin Kennedy picks up her second team seventh. So we'll see the one and one now. Lindy Carey, freshman from Leo High School. One of the leading scorers in Indiana last year. First free throw is good. You know, it's a, a unique fact, Dave. Uh, in the recruiting wars, IPFW picked up a leading score in the Summit Athletic Conference, leading score in the uh, ACAC, and the leading score in the Northeast Corner Conference. That should be good news for the next four years. Second free throw also good by uh, Lindy Carey. She now has four points, and it's a four-point Nashadon lead. Ball knocked out of bounds. Tiara Dudley back in the IPFW lineup, as is Betsy Gerald for Hillsdale. 8.04 left and a half. 27-24 our score, IPFW on top. Glad you could join us this afternoon here on College 56 Sports. Hyde, give it back and forth. Stephanie Hyde for three, short, out of bounds. It'll be Mastodon basketball when we come back. We have another media timeout. 7.46 left in the first half. Our score is 27-24, IPFW on top. You too can participate in the excitement of Mastodon athletics by joining the Royal Dance Club. The Royal Dons is IPFW's official athletic booster organization. 
Members enjoy benefits such as priority seating at IPFW sports events, visits by coaches, and food and refreshments in the hospitality room. For more information about the Royal Dons, call 260-481-6643 or write to Royal Dons Club, 2101 East Coliseum Boulevard, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46805. Well, Mike, the field goal shooting has uh, evened out a little bit here in this game, as we can see by the uh, closeness of the score. IPFW has now uh, hit 10 for 21 for the first half so far, but that means one out of the last uh, eight. Here's a replay with uh, Vieira Bibbs. Yeah, the back. pass that was intended for uh, Geneva, Geneva Murdoch, yeah, but yeah. Uh, Johnny on the spot was Vieira Bibbs. I tell you, the Dons have played well. Yeah, they've been alert. Uh, they've, they've played aggressively. They just need to keep it up. And sometimes the shooting will fall off. But if you keep everything else going at a high pace, uh, you'll be all right. Leading scorers right now for IPFW, Amy Geralds with 10 points. And for Hillsdale, Stephanie Hyde with 7. Here we go. Dons with a basketball. Up by 3. Courtney nicely looking, looking. Give and go. Elmore loses it, but picked up by Nicely. Good recovery by Courtney Nicely. Ten in the shot clock. Pretty active zone defense right now by Hillsdale. That when the ball goes inside, there's a lot of black shirts collapsing on that ball. Dudley missed the shot. She was triple teamed. Back for the deuce. Jen Newsome. She now has seven points. And it's a one-point ball game. The ball is knocked out of bounds off of Lindy Carey last. Chargers coming up with a little bit of pressure that time. And they will have the basketball and a chance to take the lead. Hillsdale's an experienced ball club, and as you had mentioned, they were in the NCAA playoffs for Division II last year. So they, uh, they've they been there. They, they won't panic. Ball knocked out of bounds by the foot of Amy Geralds. They'll reset the 30-second shot clock, 7.02 on the first half game clock. Stephanie Hyde, the 5'5 senior, will inbound it for Hillsdale. Looking for Kennedy inside, can't find her, so they'll reverse it. Give and go, Hyde in the paint, kicks it back out. Whistle. Hand check call going to be called by referee Dan Morgan. Lindy Carey picks up her first foul, team fifth. Chargers will inbound it right in front of us. And Hillsdale is another foul away from being in the one and one. Stephanie Hyde up top, watched by Lindy Carey. IPFW is in a man to man defense. This line drive by Hyde, cut off by Elmore, picks it back out. Shot missed by Newsome. Back comes IPFW. Courtney nicely. Dudley baseline has it taken away. Again, that defense is really collapsing on anything in the middle. Chargers on the run. Wieson for three. In, out, and in again. Mary Wieson with her first long ball of the afternoon and puts Hillsdale on top, 29-27. Yeah, Hillsdale's on a little 12-2 run here that uh, IPFW needs to uh, put a check to. Another turnover by IPFW, and now we got a retaliatory foul, I believe by Amy Geralds. It's Probably be. See what official Annie Timmons yeah. says. 44, the ball, Amy Geralds, her first, team sixth. Substitution for IPFW, Jessica Ramey, 5'3 freshman, played her high school ball at West Noble High School. For Hillsdale, number 24, Jen Rowling, a 5'9 sophomore. Chargers will inbound it. They're up by two with 5.48 to go and a half, 29-27. Chargers moving the ball on the perimeter. Yeah, a very patient team down on the offense. They look, they pass, they cut, come off the pick. Newsome, double team, looking for help. 
They're going to call jump on. It'll be IPFW's on the alternate possession. Good defense. Wouldn't give up the baseline. Trap on the baseline and got the ball. Boy, I'm looking here. Three freshmen on the floor for IPFW right now. Junior and a senior. Elmore, nice move nice in the move. paint. Yeah, nice athletic move. Had to kind of change her direction just a little bit. Her first two points of the day. Ties it at 29. Ball knocked out of bounds. 5.02 left in the first half. Our score is tied, 29 apiece. Stephanie Hyde back in the uh, Hillsdale lineup, replacing Mary Wieson. Hillsdale getting a rest for each of their two starting guards. Nice move, shot missed, put back by Kennedy, missed, no good. Ball out of bounds and it'll belong to IPFW. Hillsdale had good inside position that time. IPFW was caught looking just a little bit. Jessica Ramey. Elmore from the foul line off the back of the rim, no good. Rebounded and then a turnover by Steps Stephanie on the baseline, yeah. So the Dons will get another chance. 4-44 with number 44, Amy Gerald is going to inbound it. Three-pointer long by Gerald's, rebounded by Jen Newson. Here comes Hillsdale. Gerald's tried for the steal, went out of bounds. Fiera Bibbs back in the IPFW lineup, replacing Ashley Elmore. Betsy Gerald, number 35, the inbounded for the visitors from Hillsdale, Michigan. Three-point shot on the way and in by Betsy Gerald, her second tray of the afternoon. She has a good-looking shot, whether it's inside or outside. Good player. Charger lead is three. Carey shot, partially blocked. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll remain, no, it goes over to Hillsdale. I think that uh, was batted off of Tierra, maybe, and bounced out of bounds. Chargers will inbound it. 4.02, substitution. Jenny Green back in the lineup, replacing Jessica Ramey for IPFW. Hillsdale has a uh, smaller lineup in right now. Quick, fast lineup. Probably will handle the press okay. I'll say it's small. 5.3, 5.5, 5.5. Inside feed to Hyde, got away from her defender. Great pass. Stephanie Hyde now with nine. Wieson saw the opening inside and uh, fired that ball in there. Chargers with their biggest lead, 34-29. See how IPFW responds. They need to be patient with all that youth out on the court. Hand check foul going to be called on Hillsdale. Fouls on Jen Rowling, her first, team's eighth, so Amy Gerald's at the line. One plus possible bonus. Three Amy. for four on the day. Yep. Kind of needs them. First one good. Cuts the deficit to four, 34-30. Second one good as well. Makes it 34-31. We've got our final media timeout of the first half, so let's take a break. 325 left in the first half. Our score, Hillsdale 34, IPFW 31. You're watching IPFW basketball on College 56 Sports.
right center and get a look at a replay and a three-point shot on the way. Good from Hillsdale. Yeah. Betsy Gold, I think it was, wasn't it? Yep. As we were talking off air, Doc, the, the numbers have cooled off for both teams, really, from a shooting standpoint. Yeah, a little bit, but particularly IPFW has uh, gone 2 for 12 since they were 9 for 13. And their turnovers, though, have uh, really picked up in the last 7, 8 minutes. So uh, they need to settle down, get things back in, in uh, control here. Right now, you talk about turnovers. IPFW turned it over 11 times as compared to 8 for Hillsdale. Back we go, Chargers with the ball. IPFW gonna play full court man to man. Again, it's a little different in the women's game. You don't have the 10 second rule, you just have to uh, get it across. Get a shot or something within time. 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Chargers playing at uh, 1 2 2 looking inside game, and now we got a whistle as bodies smack each other underneath. Be a foul on IPFW. Let's see who they're going to call it on. Tiara Dudley is guilty of the infraction. Her second team seventh, so Hillsdale go to the line. Betsy Gerald, one plus bonus. Betsy so far today. A deuce, two trays, and a free throw. Make it two free throws. She's already in double figures, ten points. Got good form on the free throw shooting. Follow through. Boy, this Hillsdale team shot 81% as a team from the floor I mean from the free throw line last year. Up by five, just under three minutes to go on a half. 36-31. Pass from Green intended for Dudley, taken away by Hillsdale. Wieson on the break. Misses the shot. Amy Gerald's helped deflect that one away. Good hustle by Amy Gerald's coming down to not to let her get a wide open layup. Amy thought about the three. I think this zone has really uh, caused some difficulty. Traveling call called on Jenny Green. It's a basic 2-3 zone that Hillsdale's been throwing at them for about the last eight or ten minutes. Wieson wants to drive on Carey, but there's a wee bit of a size disadvantage there. Just a little bit. 5-3 to 5-10. Chargers perpetual motion. Looking for that cutter inside. There's Hyde. Turnaround shot off the glass and in. Stephanie Hyde now with 11 points. Which uh, shows you that a 5-5 player can still go inside and get a good looking shot. And how. It's good offensive movement by her there. Dudley off the glass. Misses the shot. Gets her own rebound. Forces it back up. No good again. Bibbs with it. And she loses it to Hyde. Couple of cracks, but a miss for IPFW. Back comes Hillsdale. And they go back to that set offense, movement, screen, roll, reverse, cut, and look out. Stephanie Hyde. Ball knocked out of bounds. They're going to say out of bounds off of uh, Hillsdale. It'll be IPFW possession. 1 to 32 left in the half. Hillary O'Connell back in for Lindy Carey for IPFW. Jenny Green going to bring the ball up over midcourt. Bibbs has it taken away. Fight for it. Boy, now again, they're going to call a jump ball. And on the possession, it'll be Hillsdale uh, basketball. With that zone that Hillsdale's playing, when that ball goes in the paint, uh, you better be quick with doing something with it or it's gone. Elmore in for uh, Tiara Dudley. Chargers with the basketball. 120 to go in the first half. Stephanie Hyde watched by Green. Hillsdale just keeps moving and moving and moving. Yes, they do. Set a screen. Inside. Well. Up and in. Jen Newsome. She now has nine points. And it's a nine-point Hillsdale lead. Under a minute to go and a half. Hillsdale really come on in the last six, seven minutes. Yes, they have. 
Amy Gerald's for three. And in fact, the three-point shot is about the only thing IPFW has been able to get cleanly for the last seven or eight minutes. Fifteen points for Amy Gerald as Hillsdale misses a shot. Nice block on the way in. I think uh, that block was made by Ashley Elmore. Bruce Patterson says timeout. 30 second timeout with 26 seconds left, 24 on the shot clock. Two seconds. Tune in Sunday evening, November 24th, to see the 1936 classic film of My Man Godfrey, directed by Gregory LaCava and starring Carol Lombard, William Powell, Alice Brady, and Gail Patrick. In one of the original 1930s screwball comedies, Powell plays Godfrey, who begins the story as a resident of the city dump, who is stumbled upon by socialites on a scavenger hunt. His abilities in dealing with them lead to his being hired as the next in a string of butlers in the Bullock household. Tune in Sunday evening, November 24th at 10 o'clock to discover how it turns out right here on College 56. Two second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. So IPFW can take most of this clock to get their shot. See if they can run a good offense and get a good shot off. Scoring would be gravy, but uh, Again, if you run it, the passing, the cutting, the positioning, I think that's what Bruce and the staff are looking for. Down to seven seconds. Green in the lane, misses the shot. Rebounded by Gretchen Rocco, who came in at the break. And the buzzer goes off before any further damage can be done. So we've come to halftime here at the Hilliard Gate Sports Center. Teams head for the locker room, and our halftime score finds the visitors from Hillsdale College leading IPFW 40 to 34. We'll take a break and then come back later. Again, 40 34, Church is on top. You're watching IPFW basketball on College 56 Sports. Dr. Hermine Van Nuys is a professor who teaches her English literature classes with passion to inspire her students. I'm very passionate about what I teach. I love the literature I teach. And I'm very proud of the faculty in my department. Her 30 years of dedication to IPFW has earned her much respect on the collegiate level. We offer, really, a wonderful English major, I think, with a number of opportunities. There really is much more, I think, probably a personal uh, relationships established in our classes because they tend to be smaller. Because of her experience, Dr. Van Nuys recognizes IPFW's advantages over other universities. Students here can come to our offices. They will be seen by us. We speak to them, which is the ideal way I think to teach. IPFW, the right school, right here, right now. I wanted to study engineering so I could get a better job without giving up the job I've already got. Of course, getting a degree without going into debt was pretty high on my list, too. And I wanted the kind of education that I could only get in smaller classes with the professor's full attention. IPSW offered me all of that. And the Purdue Engineering degree is going to look pretty good on my resume. Going to IPFW is the best choice I ever made. IPFW, the right school, right here, right now. Y'all ready for this? 
reach to the young people that are interested in science and technology, we have to reach them at this age. Even older students or older kids are sometimes too late. So if we are really uh, true to what we believe, uh, we have to be interested, not necessarily in this event, but in similar events. It could be this event or similar kind of activities. Because that's the time in which uh, we still can keep the interest of the children in science and technology. I really wanted to go for an Indiana University business degree. But with housing and tuition, it really adds up, and the money just wasn't there to go away to college. And with a two-year-old, my housing options were kind of limited anyway. And the truth is, I really wanted to keep my job and stay close to home. Going to IPFW made all of that possible. IPFW? The best choice I ever made. Indiana University. Purdue University. Fort Wayne. The right school, right here, right now. With over 30 years of dedication to his students, Professor of Geosciences Deepak Chowdhury recognizes the IPFW experience. He doesn't spoon feed you all the information that you need. He mostly will give you all of the knowledge that you need in bits and pieces. And it's almost like a puzzle where he gives you all the pieces and in the end you'll put it together and have the larger picture yourself. I really enjoy it. He's a great professor to work with and for. IPFW is one of only three universities in the state to offer students hands-on experience with their own seismograph. This gives Dr. Chowdhury great pride, but it is the interaction with his students that has kept him teaching. When the students understand the concept, what's happening, that glimmer of light in their eyes, that's that you cannot trade for any money. So that's the most important thing. IPFW, the right school, right here, right now. What's the first thing that comes to mind when someone says they're an engineer? On this month's edition of Up Close, we're going to get rid of all the old stereotypes and see how engineering can be fun. We'll be talking with two professors and an outreach coordinator to see how easy it is to get children interested in engineering at a young age. Join me, Jeanette Liu, for Up Close Sundays at noon on College Cable Access Channel 56.
cleverly inflating my tires burns less fuel and saves me money on gas. Yeah, I'm saving Mother Nature from pollution, but more importantly, she saved me 11 bucks! Ouch! Environmental defense! Get green! By keeping my car regularly tuned, I save money on gas and repairs. That also means cleaner air. You know, feels good to help save the cash, planet. Environmental defense! Get green! For more tips, go to getgreen.com. PFW, Mike Maas and Dave Scout, and happy to be uh, bringing you the action of this afternoon's preseason matchup, featuring the Chargers of Hillsdale College and the IPFW Mastodons. And Dave, this first half was actually a tale of two halves, as IPFW came out of the blocks quick, hit five of their first six shots, I think you said nine of their first 13, as we look at a replay of an Amy Gerald's uh, swish for three. And uh, the Dons controlled the first half of the first half yeah. very well. First 10 minutes, they pretty much had things the way they wanted it. And then Hillsdale came back, uh, proving that their 23-8 and record of a year ago was no fluke, and uh, they dominated the second 10 minutes of play. And I don't remember for sure when Hillsdale made the switch from man-to-man -man defense to zone, but they've stayed with that zone, and it has uh, created problems for IPFW. It'll be interesting to see now if the Dons can come out and have made some sort of an adjustment to attack that 2-3. It's a standard 2-3 zone, but it really clogs up the middle. Well, let's take a look at some of the numbers uh, here in the first half. First for the visitors from Hillsdale College. They were led by two players, Stephanie Hyde and Betsy Gerald, each with 11 points. Nine points for Jen Newsong. Five points from Mary Wieson. Four points from Caitlin Kennedy. They were the only five players that scored. For IPFW, as we get a look at another replay here, again, Hillsdale moving, 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 getting the open person underneath. They were led, uh, IPFW was, by junior Amy Geralds. 15 points, four of nine from the floor, five of six from the free throw line. She was the only Don in double figures. Uh, Varia Bibbs, six points. Lindy Carey, four. Hillary O'Connell, three. And then Courtney Nicely, Ashley Elmore, and Tiara Dudley with uh, two points apiece. Rebounding, favorite IPFW, 16 to 15. Leading rebounder for the Dons, Vieira Bibbs with five. Uh, Hyde and uh, Kennedy with four apiece leading Hillsdale. Assists, seven for Hillsdale, five for IPFW. Turnovers, and Doc, uh, again, yeah. you talked about Hillsdale turning up the heat. Hillsdale forced 15 IPFW turnovers in the first half to only nine for themselves. Yeah, that's one significant uh, statistic right there, as is probably from the shooting standpoint. Uh, the three-point shooting. Hillsdale, five of seven. IPFW, three of 12. And uh, long balls can bring you back in a contest in a hurry. Uh, again, thanks to the uh, crew in the back, Bernie Lowmiller and company, for bringing you some of those highlights as you get a look at First year head coach for Hillsdale, Claudette Charney. Uh, she's a veteran of uh, coaching, but the first uh, first time as the head coach at Hillsdale. And as we said earlier, Bruce Patterson in his second year here at IPFW, but in his 12th year overall as a head coach. So uh, as we get ready to start the second half, Doc, what do you see as uh, what may or may not happen? Well, I think in this second half, and among other things, the, uh, the freshman kids now have had an opportunity to play 20 minutes, uh, find out what it's all uh, all about against a pretty good team, and so now we'll have to see if, uh, if poise takes over uh, in one in some way, shape, or form. It'll be IPFW basketball to start the uh, second half. They'll be heading from right to left on your TV screen. Again, they're in the home white. And you see uh, Courtney Nicely, Lindy Carey, Ashley Elmore, Amy Geralds, and uh, Fiera Bibbs. So one slight change in the uh, starting lineup for IPFW in the second half. Yeah, the inside presence now should be pretty good for IPFW because both Ashley and Fiera uh, have uh, been really, really active inside, rebounding, putting the ball back. Hillsdale takes the floor. They've got all five of their starters, I believe. Betsy Gerald, 
Stephanie Hyde, Barry Wieson, Jen Newson, and Caitlin Kennedy on the floor. So here we go. And it would appear that Hillsdale's going to stay with that zone for now. Why not? They've got the lead with it. Yep. Three-second call on IPFW. I believe Vera Bibbs got called for the infraction. That's 16th turnover. So Hillsdale gets the ball for the first time in the second half. IPFW in the man-to-man. -man. They need to make a good stop here now on the defensive end to get themselves going. Again, Chargers moving the ball on the perimeter, looking for the cutter inside. Wieson for three, switch. Mary Wieson, eight points, two of them, three balls. And it's a 43-34 Charger advantage. FBFW working around the perimeter, now gets it inside. Inside nice move, move. Here it is. The sophomore now has uh, eight points. Ball knocked out of bounds. Chris Patterson saying, hey, it belongs to us. Trying to do a little officiating, but uh, his, his shirt's totally black. It's not black and white. That's right. <laughs> Hillary O'Connor in the lineup for IPFW. Replacing Lindy Carey. Ball knocked away out of bounds and off of Hillsdale. Good defensive play there by IPFW. Yes, they were. Uh, Denied that inside pass. Chance to turn over for Hillsdale. O'Connell, squish, long two. Two-pointer from the corner. Hillary O'Connell now. And then they uh, pick points. up the loose ball. Turnover, a chance for four quick ones here. Bibbs, and put back. Maybe five. Oh, maybe five. Again, a little bit like the start of the first half. When IPFW was picking up loose balls, got uh, some quick offense. Foul was on Stephanie Hyde, her third, team first. Betsy Bean coming back in the Hillsdale lineup. Fiera Bibbs shooting one. She's got ten points so far. First time at the line. Knocks it down. So Five quick second half points for Fiera Bibbs. So it's a now a two-point ball game. 43-41, 18 and a half minutes to go in a contest. Hillsdale content on running that basically 1-2-2 offense. And I think maybe now IPFW has dropped back into his own defense. Three-point shot on the way and in yeah. by Betsy Gerald. That's her third tray of the afternoon. Lead back up to five, 46-41. Inside feed to Bibbs and has the ball knocked away. Picked up by Hyde. Stephanie Hyde no takes it all the way coast to coast. Left-handed shot. Ooh. Off the rim, no. Rebound by Amy Geralds. Here comes IPFW. Elmore, 16-footer. Off the rim, no good. Bibbs with another offensive rebound. Let's she see what fouled. we got as a call here. 35, that's Betsy Gerald, her second team second. But again, a nice offensive rebound yes. by Viara Bibb, and I think that's her third of the afternoon. She's been really active underneath the basket. Nicely to Gerald's. Back to nicely, three-pointer. Off the rim, no. Rebounded by Jen Newsong of Hillsdale. Here come the Chargers. Oh, nice lead pass. High came nice. from nowhere. Nice lead pass, fast break. That's, uh, that's experience playing together. Those kids have played together for two or three years. 48-41, the lead back up to seven. Here comes IPFW. Courtney nicely, nice feed underneath the Bibbs, and the air is fouled. Nice feed, nicely to Bibbs. Yeah, drew, drew the pressure by driving down the lane and dished off. Vieira gets a chance to go to the free throw. Fouls on Jen Newsome, her third, or second rather, team third. And we've got a 30-second timeout called by IPFW. 
Tune in Sunday evening, November 24th, to see the 1936 classic film My Man Godfrey, directed by Gregory LaCava and starring Carol Lombard, William Powell, Alice Brady, and Gail Patrick in one of the original 1930s screwball comedies, Powell Plays Godfrey, who begins the story as a resident of the city dump who stumbled upon by socialites on a scavenger hunt. His abilities in dealing with them lead to his being hired as the next in a string of butlers in the Bullock household. Tune in Sunday evening, November 24th at 10 o'clock to discover how it turns out right here on College 56. Well, timeout called, and I think it has to be a full timeout by uh, Bruce Patterson as we get a look at the replay. And again, Stephanie Hyde, I'd say she came out of nowhere. Yeah, she was streaking down the far sideline. And uh, the girls look for each other, and they see each other and make some good passes. Well, right now with 17.09 left here in the second half, they enjoy a 7-point lead, 48-41. And uh, again, Betsy Giro, 14 points. Stephanie High, 13 points. Uh, Jet Dusso, 9 points. Mary Wiesen, 8. Balance scoring by the Chargers. Very good balance. Giro's 15 points. Giro Biffs, 11. Five of those here in the second half, leading a uh, IPFW offensive attack. And Hillary O'Connell has come off the bench to score six points. Fiora Bibbs shooting two. Couldn't get the roll. Where's that home court bounce when you need it? <laughs> yeah, let's see if she gets some good follow through here and hits the second. In, out, and in again. One out of two for Viara Bibbs. Makes it a six point game. IPFW and that uh, triangle press, so to speak, a 1 2 2. Chargers not giving into the pressure. Playing hot potato almost. But they didn't panic, and that's a sign of an experienced team. No basket. Going to call foul on Viara Bibbs instead. That is her third team first here in the second half. But it stopped almost a sure basket by Hillsdale. Yes, it did. Oh, nice defense by Tiara Dudley. Bibbs tied up, out of the possession. The ball goes back over to Hillsdale. Yeah, by IPFW couldn't find the handle that time. It was a good hustle. Stephanie Hyde, the inbound it. Looking for somebody. Wieson, top of the key, three. Short, rebounded O'Connell. Here come the Mastodons. Courtney nicely, top of the key. Bibbs on the uh, high post. Then that ball goes in the lane. And you have to be really, really careful. Gerald's for three. Short. Gets her own rebound. Drives baseline. Stops, pops. Long. Bibbs underneath. No good. Whistle on a foul underneath. Let's see what's going to be on number 21. Jen Newsom. Newsom, that's her third, team fourth. Boy, Fiara Bibbs, something that this team has needed. A presence yes. inside, and Fiara Bibbs has come to the forefront here this afternoon. She's got seven rebounds. I think three of them or four of them are offensive. O'Connell inside for Bibbs, loses the ball. Out of bounds. Last touched, I think, by Hillsdale. Hillsdale. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got a media timeout. Comes with 15-59 left. Our score, Hillsdale 48, IPFW 42. You are watching IPFW Basketball on College 56 Sports. Greetings from your alumni office. Have you been out with the old gang lately? Have you come back to visit campus or had the chance to mentor a student? Are you receiving your alumni magazine? There's so much your alumni office can do for you. We'll help you keep in touch with your friends. We'll personally show you around campus to see what's new. We'll send you news and stories about your alma mater. And we'll be happy to show you how you can make a difference in the life of a current student. All you need to do is just let us know. Come, Come on, on, get, get involved. involved! Back at the Hilliard Gates Sports Center on the campus of IPFW as you watch another three ball going in by the uh, Hillsdale. 
Chargers lead by 6-48-42. Uh, thoughts, Mr. Scout? It's, it's been a uh, one of those kinds of games when IPFW's tried to make it a run, get back close, then Hillsdale makes a small run and goes back. So, so far, early in this second half, uh, IPFW hasn't been able to cut into that lead and maintain it. So we'll see how they go now in the next five or six minutes. In fact, uh, right now the teams have uh, scored eight points apiece in the second half. Fiora Bibbs, six, and uh, O'Connell, two for IPFW. And Betsy Gerald and Mary Wieson, three apiece, and Stephanie Hyde, two for the Chargers. Tiara Dudley, the inbounded for the Dons. Give and go underneath, back to Dudley, up and in. Nice move on the baseline. Good luck on the pass from Amy Gerald. Four points now for the senior from Cincinnati. It's a 48-44 game. Yosdale gets it over midcourt. And once they get over midcourt, looks like IPFW kicks back into a man-to-man uh, -man this time. I think so. Good defense, Courtney, nicely. Tied up Betsy Gerald, another possession. It'll go over to IPFW. Courtney's down on the court, and I'm not sure what uh, may have gotten the wind knocked out of her. Courtney, a 5'8 sophomore from Lebanon, Indiana, and she really came into her own the latter part of last season, Doc. Yeah, she was a freshman last year that, uh, after she had taken some lumps early, was a nice contributor at the end of the year. Started as a uh, two guard, and after uh, injuries and what have you, ended up playing the point for most of the last uh, part of the season. Played very, very well. Don's on the perimeter. Dudley has it knocked away, and now they're going to call a foul. Annie Timmons says, number 10, Stephanie Hyde. That is her fourth. Team fifth. That could be a key. It could be real significant. 15-15 uh, to go, and your leading yeah. score is four fouls. See what happens nicely. Gerald's. The ball around. Three-pointer, Amy Gerald's. Off the iron. No good. Nicely with the offensive board. Pass intended for Bibbs. Knocked out of bounds. It'll remain Mastodon basketball as Jen Newsome comes in for Stephanie Hyde. Hyde checks out with 13 points and four personal fouls. The 15-02 mark, we'll see how long she stays on the bench. Dudley gets it inbounds. Gerald's baseline has it knocked away by Kennedy. Here come the Chargers. Oh, nice, nice passing. He just didn't quite control it. But they were looking for each other. Walk off the hands of Bean out of bounds. Goes to IPFW. Don's now with an opportunity to cut back into that lead a little bit more. 11 turnovers now on. Uh, and now Dudley turns it over for IPFW. Yeah. That's their 18th turnover for IPFW. Good thing this is a preseason game. Doesn't count the standings. Chance for both teams to see how they fare. Again, pressure by the Dons and the Chargers break it. Wieson, watched by O'Connell. Cross court. 12 on the shot clock. New song for three, off the rim, no. Rebounded Dudley for IPFW. To nicely, up court quickly to Gerald's. Cross court pass to nicely. Give and go. O'Connell for three. Off the rim, no. Rebound fought for. And they're going to call a foul on IPFW. Yeah, that's a tough foul for Vieira. Yeah, yeah, she picks up her fourth, team second. And there were three people uh, around there that. Tough foul, but she was hustling. Geneva Murdoch, Ashley Elmore in the lineup for IPFW. Dudley and Bibbs go out. Chargers inbounded. They lead by four, 48-44, 14 minutes to go. Wieson, like a locomotive. Good ball handler. Always looking for the teammate. They're playing that triangle passing game. 
Nice play by Gerald, and she draws the foul. Good hustle, Amy Gerald. Oh, they're going to call a foul on Amy. Yeah, Amy had uh, had number 35's arm pinned her back, so she couldn't get to it. It's Amy's second team, third. Here, I thought she made a good defensive play. Well, it was a good defensive play. I tried. Play. <laughs> <laughs> she put good pressure on. Chargers with a basketball. Up by four at 48-44. Gonna call baseline violation by Jen Newsome since she stepped on the baseline. Turn over number 12. Both teams having a little bit of difficulty getting set up here in the middle of the second half. Almost looks like they're playing a mere offense to each other. Nicely for three off the rim, no. Rebounded by O'Connell. Donzo set it up. Double dribble, palming the basketball call by referee Dan Morgan. Bruce Patterson, I don't think, agreed with it, but like you said earlier, uh, Doc, <laughs> Bruce has a black shirt on, not a black and white striped shirt. That's right. 19th turnover for IPFW. Weeson, the senior, showing that she can run the offense for Hillsdale. Oh, nice feed inside, and now we're going to call. Nice oh, deal in the back. Oh, is that right? Oh, for hooking. Uh, picks up her fourth. We'll take it. Team fifth. I thought for sure we were going to get called on. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Hillstone decides to call a 30-second timeout. Tune in Sunday evening, December the 1st at 7 p.m. to the Contemporary Author Series here on College 56. Visiting writer Lawson Ineda recently visited IPFW and reads from his original poems on topics such as jazz and Japanese internment camps during the Second World War. That's 7 p.m. Sunday evening, December the 1st for Contemporary Authors right here on College 56. Hillsdale uh, clinging to a four-point lead at the moment, but there just hasn't been a lot of scoring by either team in the last three or four minutes of action. There we see the... look at a three-point shot. Yeah. And also, you saw a lot of black shirts in the uh, rebound position on that. Good thing we made the shot. <laughs> yes. Back to the live action. Amy Gerald drives the lane. Up, no good. Fight for the loose ball controlled by Hillsdale. Betsy Gerald got the ball to uh, Caitlin Kennedy. Gives it to Wieson. Gretchen Rocco back in the Hillsdale lineup now. About this time of the game, too, is when the fatigue and conditioning begins to set in. We'll see who gets their second win. Baseline move Ooh. up and in. Betsy Gerald. Yes, she did. 16 points now for her. And the lead is back up to six at 50 to 44. O'Connell missed on a three-pointer. And they're going to say that although oh, Hillstar got the rebound and they stepped on the end line, so it's IPFW basketball. Lost it out of bounds. Another chance for the Dons as Jessica Ramey has it to Gerald's. Miscommunication. Erdak and Elmore not seeing eye to eye. Hillsdale comes down on the run. Rocco is fouled and she'll shoot two. And I think the foul will go to Geneva Murdoch, freshman from Northside High School right here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Her first, team fourth. I said Geneva was the leading scorer in the SAC last year. I said earlier Lindy Carey was the leading scorer in the ACAC and Jessica Ramey was the leading scorer in the NECC. That's Bruce Patterson looking for some offensive punch. Gretchen Rocco got the shooter's roll on that free throw. She now lines up number two. Her first point of the afternoon. Comes with 12.05 left. Second free throw, no good. Ball knocked out of bounds by Caitlin Kennedy. It'll belong to IPFW. Downs down by seven. They've got some work to do and 12 minutes to do it. Ramey at the point. Ball knocked out of bounds by Rocco. Good hands by Gretchen Rocco. And we've got a media timeout. A 
11.50 left here in the second half. Our score, Hillsdale 51, IPFW 44. You're watching IPFW basketball on College 56 Sports. Welcome back everybody to the Hilly Gate Sports Center here on the campus of IPFW. Mike Moss, Dave Scott with you. And as uh, you were just telling me off air, Doc, uh, experience for Hillsdale, seven returning players, IPFW with eight freshmen. And right now it's showing a little bit as uh, Hillsdale enjoys a 51-44 lead as we look at a replay. Good baseline move there. Betsy Gerald is, has played a real solid ball game for Hillsdale. She's got 16 points and leads the Chargers in scoring. Again, a quick look at some of the numbers. IPFW has turned the ball over 20 times as opposed to 13 for Hillsdale. The competition that they had there at that timeout showed a couple of future uh, college basketball players. Let's see when they get their first official <laughs> visits. <laughs> Maybe in about 11, 12 years. There you go. Ready to go. Mastodon's the inbound. It. Amy Jones, Elmore at the high post, swings it out. Lindy Carey for three, short. Rebound picked up by Kennedy of the Chargers. Here comes Hillsdale. Patient offense. Three point shot up and in. Betsy Bean. Betsy Bean has done an awfully solid job for Hillsdale, too, off of the bench. Lead up to 10. Murdoch shot, knocked away. Here comes Hillsdale on the run. Wieson inside to Kennedy, double teamed. Kicks it out, and a three-pointer by Mary Wieson. Boy, and in a hurry. Two three-pointers can just be uh, devastating to you. Wieson now with 11, and another turnover. And the turnovers. By IPFW. Amy Jones comes back with a steal for the Dons. One on two, she decides to hold it up. Good decision. She didn't have much help there. No, no opening. Now they need to set up and get some movement on the offense. Hillsdale on a 2-3 zone. Looks like a matchup. Yeah, Geralds. Among, among other things, it has slowed Amy Geralds down. Three-pointer, Jessica Ramey off the mark, out of bounds. Substitutions. Seeing number 52. Jenny Green and Kelly Boyd. Kelly Boyd, a 6'5 freshman. Mm -hmm. Hillsdale to inbound it. 10.26 to go, and they're up by a Baker's dozen. 57 44. Yes. We're approaching the midway point of the second half. Otherwise known as gut check time. Yes, it is. Offensive foul going to be called on Betsy Gerald, her third. Team seventh. Player control foul, so IPFW will inbound it. Let's see what the Dons do. Yeah, they need to get some offense going here. Murdoch in the lane, off the glass, no good. She draws the foul and she will shoot two. And foul will be on number 32, Caitlin Kennedy. That is Caitlin's third, team's eighth. Geneva Murdoch, I think she averaged close to, well, I believe it was 21 points a game last year as a senior. Right around that 20 mark. Looking for point number one right now as a Mastodon. Swish. What a sweet sound to it, doesn't it? She's now in the books. Looking for number two. Oh, nice form. Makes them both. 
Cuts the lead to 11. Turnover. Murdoch to carry it. See what the Dons can do. Ball knocked out of bounds. Full court pressure gave Hillsdale a lot of difficulty that time. The inbounding player wasn't ready for it. Take a look, Doc. IPFW, four freshmen and a junior on the floor. Mm -hmm. Let's see what the, uh, the youngsters can do. Amy Gerald for three. That doesn't hurt anything at all. Amy's been quiet. That's her first points of the second half. She now has 18. Lead down to nine. At this point, you just need to make some stops. No 12 point play. That's right. And you got a lot of time. Nine and a half minutes to go. Chargers in and out. Rocco. Bean, 17 footer, no good. Murdoch with the rebound for IPFW. Good, there's one defensive stop. Now let's see if the Dots can convert it. Jenny Green takes it, dishes off to Kelly Boyd. Carry for three. Well, that pair of threes uh, going IPFW's way counteracts the pair of threes that Hillsdale just had. And it's a five point game with just under nine minutes to play. 57-52. IPFW's got to continue to play the good defense. Don't give up any easy points. Three-point shot on the way. Missed. Tap up and in by Caitlin Kennedy. That was a great follow by Caitlin Kennedy. And Hillsdale says they're going to talk timeout. I want to remind you to tune in to College 56 Sunday evening, November 24th. That's a week from tomorrow at 8 p.m. for the replay of today's women's basketball game with Hillsdale College. Again, Sunday evening, November 24th, 8 o'clock, IPFW and Hillsdale right here on College 56. Mike, this might be a good place to mention that uh, our women's volleyball team is down in Texas in a season-ending tournament and yesterday uh, won two matches. Yeah. So they're uh, in the running for that season-ending tournament down there. And uh, I know it's been a long up and down season for Coach Kelly Hartley and her squad, but I know she was looking forward to this tournament yeah. because it was run the same way the Purdue tournament won, mm -hmm. was run, and the Dons came out on top in that tournament. So we wish them all this afternoon. Back to the gate center here. Eight and a half minutes to go. IPFW trailing by seven with a basketball. Gerald draws the foul. She'll shoot two. Fouls on Betsy Bean, her second, team ninth. Coach Claudette Charney thought it was an offensive foul, but official Annie Timmons said no, it was a block, so Amy Gerald's at the line for two. First one, good. 19 points for the junior from Beach Grove High School. Jen Newsome, four fouls back in the lineup for Hillsdale. Amy is six for seven for the day at the free throw line. And and seven seven for eight. Mm -hmm. 20 points for Gerald. Courtney nicely in the lineup replacing Jenny Green. So again, the lead is down to five. 59-54 with 8.24 to go. Hillsdale inbound it. Oh, nearly, a, it is a turnover. Yeah. Pounding the ball called on Jen Newsome. Turnover number 17 for Hillsdale. IPFW has 21. Chance for IPFW to cut into this lead. Yeah, Murdoch, 16 footer, no. Rebound fought for, controlled by Murdoch. Off the glass, no. Rebounded by Newsome for Hillsdale. Dons had two cracks at it, Doc. Yeah, they did. Good hustle underneath. Just couldn't get the ball to drop. Jed Newsome watched by Amy Geralds. Thirteen in the shot clock. Seven forty-four in the game clock. Newsome got to make something happen. Forces a shot up. No good. We got a whistle and a foul call. Drew a foul. Courtney nice. Courtney, that's her first foul of the afternoon. Fifth year in the second half on IPFW. At the line, shooting two, number 21, Jen Newsome. 
5'11 senior. Last year, uh, Newsome was an 83% free throw shooter. She averaged almost 14 points a game last year for the Chargers. And an important player for Hillsdale back into the lineup now, Stephanie Hyde, number 10, comes well, back in. We've got a media timeout, 7.38 left. Our score, Hillsdale 61, IPFW 54. You are watching IPFW Basketball on College 56 Sports. I wanted to study engineering so I could get a better job without giving up the job I've already got. Of course, getting a degree without going into debt was pretty high on my list, too. And I wanted the kind of education that I could only get in smaller classes with the professor's full attention. IPSW offered me all of that. And the Purdue Engineering degree is going to look pretty good on my resume. Going to IPFW is the best choice I ever made. IPFW, the right school, right here, right now. Back at the Hilliard Gate Sports Center here on the campus of IPFW. Mike Miles, Dave Scout with you. 7.38 left here in the second half. And we see a view on uh, the TV screen there of the Hillsdale timeout huddle planning their strategy. Well, their strategy is to hang on to a seven-point lead. They lead 61-54. We look here at the monitor dock. Balance scoring. Gerald with 16 points. Hyde with 13. Wieson and Newsome 11 apiece. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, on the IPFW ledger, Amy Gerald with 20, Vieira Bibbs with 12. Something to think about. Lindy Carey inbounds the ball for IPFW. Caught me nicely. At the point. Chargers packing that 2 3 zone in. I'm going to say if IPFW wants to win, and traveling call, yeah. says referee Dan Morgan. 22nd turnover for IPFW. Chris Patterson there on the IPFW bench. And with that additional ball handler back into the game for Hillsdale, Stephanie Hyde, this could make it a little tougher. She sat out almost eight minutes, Doc. She went out at the 15-02 mark with four fouls. Newsome, no good. Hyde kicks it out, but IPFW controls it. Here comes Lindy Carey. Looking for help. Murdoch in the paint. Stops. Travel. We're going to call traveling on Geneva Murdoch. A little tippy-toe there on the move. And a little tough. Geneva finding out the college level was slightly different than the high school level. Yeah. Hillsdale playing a 2-2-1 offense to get the ball up over midcourt. Pass knocked out of bounds by Amy Gerald, intended for Stephanie Hyde. Probably not the pass that the coach would like to play. Hillary O'Connell replacing Lindy Carey in the IPFW lineup. Stephanie Hyde will inbound it. 5-5 senior. Pass taken away by Gerald. Great anticipation of where that ball was going to go. Instant offense, three-pointer, yes! 23 points for Amy Geralds. And it's 61-57, closest IPFW's been in quite some time. 6.20 to go. Newsome also in a lineup with four fouls. Give and go. A little triangle offense here. Dish out, baseline, Newsome, swish. Good ball movement, good patience uh, on the offensive end for Hillsdale. Newsome now with 13 points, the lead back up to six. Murdoch turns it over, Amy Geralds controls it. That's the ball knocked out of bounds. Good defensive play by Betsy Gerald on Amy Geralds. We're seeing that three times in a row in a hurry. <laughs> And I think both teams uh, showing a little bit of uh, fatigue here. Amy Geralds for IPFW will inbound it. Ball knocked away. Retrieved by O'Connell. Great for the Dons. Inside pass. Center for Boyd. Stolen instead by Betsy Gerald. And we're approaching the 5 minute and 30 second mark. Still a lot of time left in this ballgame. 
63-57 our score. Hillsdale on top by six for the basketball. Whistle underneath. Foul call on IPSW. Kelly Boyd, 6'5", freshman, picks up the foul for her first. Team sixth, one more, and Hillsdale will be shooting. Yeah, that's probably the critical thing about that foul. We had one to give, but uh, if you don't have to, don't. Carey and Ashley Elmore back in the lineup for IPFW. Stephanie Heidel reading by the ball for Hillsdale. Looking for somebody inside. Can't find anyone, kicks it outside instead. Chad Newsome. Inside pass knocked away. Also in the lineup for the first time, and I just caught it, the 5'9 freshman out of Detroit, Michelle Mano. Played her high school ball at Jimmore Divine Child in the Detroit Catholic League. Wieson watched by Carey. Getting near the five minute mark. Hyde on Mano. Oh, nice no-look pass. Shot missed, however, by Kennedy. And it surprised Kennedy, I think, to see that ball pop right up to him. Amy Geralds looking for Elmore inside. Three ball. Off the rim, no. Rebound fought for. It'll be alternate possession going to Hillsdale. Amy probably needs to follow that three-point shot, and she could pick up some long rebounds along the way because Hillsdale did exactly that and cut it off. Well, I, don't, I think Amy would agree with me. She's a field shooter. Yeah, And she right. can get hot. And she can get streaky. She just felt that she could knock it down. Shot missed by Kennedy on a nice feed from Stephanie Hyde. Like you said earlier, those two have played mm -hmm. together before. It'll be Charger basketball. 4.38 to go. Hillsdale up by six. Kennedy, no, rebound Geralds, IPFW. Amy coming down the right side, looking for help. Nice feed to Murdoch, shot up, no! Out of bounds, last touch by Ashley Elmore. Couldn't get the ball off of it to, to go up and touch the glass and fall back in. Long court pass, knocked out by Elmore, Murdoch collides. They're going to call traveling. That's a strange call. <laughs> Murdoch and Elmore, in a manner of speaking, a couple of defensive backs. And I don't know, Bruce Patterson's looking. How can you call traveling when the ball is knocked out of one person's hand? On the other hand, it might be the IPFW's advantage that it was called traveling because the ball was going to be loose. A black shirt was going to be on it. Dan Morgan looked at assistant coach Chris Paul there. Ball oh, knocked away. Okay, IPFW gets it back on the steal. Another and turnover. Turnover, IPFW. Number 26. Substitution, Betsy Bean back in the lineup for Hillsdale. As Dan Morgan talking to Bruce Patterson on that last play. Chargers with the basketball. Bruce had to say, unfortunately, uh, Dan Morgan maybe listened but didn't do anything. Got a whistle underneath. And I think a hand check foul. We'll call a foul on Amy Gerald. Team seventh, so Hillsdale will go to the line as we see Vieira Bibbs coming back in the lineup for IPFW. Betsy Bean shooting one and the bonus. The 5'9 freshman switches to first. She now has four points in the afternoon. And lead back up to seven. First point scored by either team in about a minute and a half. Second free throw good as well. It's now 65-57. Hillsdale on top with four minutes to go. Elmore underneath off the glass. Nice pass from Wendy Carey. Four points for the freshman Ashley Elmore. Lead down to six, 3.45 to go. Chargers may want to work some clock now. Hyde, watched by Michelle Mano. 
Ten on the shot clock. Wieson kicks it out. Three-point shot, no good. Rebounded by Michelle Mano. Ball knocked away, picked up by Hyde. And there was experience, a senior yeah. or a freshman. Yeah. Foul call and Vandy Carey. That's her second team eighth. Again, IPFW played some good defense, Doc. Yes, they did. 28 of the 30 seconds when that three-point shot went up in the air. And sometimes it's all in how the ball bounces. Stephanie Hyde at the line for the first time this afternoon. Last year, 87% shooter. First Nothing one good. good on that one. Stephanie now has 14 points on the afternoon. Chance to make it 15. No, misses. Bibbs with the rebound. 3.18 to go. The lead is 7, 66-59. Elmore back up top to carry. Three-pointer on the way. Off the rim, no. Rebound controlled by Betsy Gerald of Hillsdale. Betsy Gerald's been a real solid player for Hillsdale. Hyde loses it. Nicely picks it up. Don's on the run. Needs some offense. We're under three minutes. Pass too hard for Gerald's to control. Another turnover. And we've got our final media timeout called with 2.47 left. IPFW trails, 66-59. Want to remind you that our next uh, live event here at College 56 will actually take place January 7th, 2003, a Tuesday night when uh, sister schools of some note will get together. IUPUI, IPFW men's basketball. The Jaguars defeated IPFW last year, and uh, Mastodon's Coach Doug Knows team looking for revenge. So again, Tuesday night, January 7th, 7 o'clock, IPFW men's basketball right here on College 56. Speaking of the men's team, Doc, want to wish them well. They are uh, out in Fort Collins, Colorado, playing at the Black Coaches Association Invitational. As we get a look at a replay here, Lindy Carey feed inside to Ashley Elmore. Ashley did a nice job of keeping control of that ball and getting it up in the hoop. Uh, again, I, the men's team, they're playing Colorado State this afternoon. They will play Cleveland State Monday night and Florida Atlantic Tuesday night and then come home for the home opener next Friday night at the Memorial Coliseum. And boy, if you haven't been there yet, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous facility now. Over 10,000 seats. They're going to take on Butler University, and all the Bulldogs did last year. Let's go 26 and 6, regular season champs of the Horizon League. Also knocked off IU at uh, in the Indiana Classic at Bloomington. Should be a great ball game. 2:35 to go. Hillsdale with a seven-point lead in the basketball, and it's keep away time now. Pass and cut. Pass and cut. Three-point shot on the way, no good. Bibbs with the rebound off the Gerald miss. Here comes Lindy Carey. Driving, driving, stopping, popping, missing, loose ball. Picked up by Courtney nicely. Two oh four to go, nicely. Baseline drive, shot up off the glass and in. Nice move. And they needed that one badly. Four points for Courtney Nicely. It's now 66-61 with a buck 53 to go. IPFW needs three defensive stops in a row. Yeah, they especially need one right here. Wieson to Hyde. Ball knocked away. There's one stop picked there up by go. Elmore. But you got to convert on the offensive end. Carey cross court to Gerald's three pointer on the way. Short. Rebounded Mary Wieson for Hillsdale. And Amy Gerald's uh, the retaliatory foul, I think. Not a good foul. Reaching from behind. Still need to show that patience. Don't put them at the line and give them too easy. Fourth foul on Amy Gerald's. Ninth on the team, so Hillsdale at the line. One in bonus. And it'll be Mary Wieson at the line for the first time this afternoon. She's got 11 points so far today. And she's only a 90% free throw shooter from last year. I don't know for sure how much rest Amy Gerald's has had today, but I don't believe she's been out of the lineup the whole second half. 
She has played hard. She's got 23 points, but right now she's got four fouls. Second free throw up and good as well. The lead back up to seven with a minute 20 to go. Wieson now with 13 points. Elmore, 14 footer, yes. Good move. Ashley Good Elmore with a half a dozen in IPFW calls timeout. Minute 12 and five point lead. Let's take a break. IPFW down by five. You're watching IPFW basketball here on College 56 Sports. everybody at Harry Gate Sports Center. Mike Maz, Dave Scutton with you. 112 left, 68-63. Hillsdale with the lead in the basketball. IPFW continuing full court pressure. And they put the hand ball in the hands of an excellent uh, guard, Stephanie Lind Hyde. I'm sorry, Lindy Carey draws the foul. Her third, it's the tenth in the team, so it's a double bonus for these final 68 seconds. And as you said, Stephanie Hyde back at the line, and she will shoot two. She is one of two this afternoon. Knocks down the first one. She now has 15 points, make it 16. Cool as a cube. Yes, she was. Lead back up to seven, 103 to go. IPFW needs some buckets. Not use up as much time in doing it. Lindy Carey for three, yes. That helps. Lindy Carey. She now has 10 points and another timeout called. This one coming with 53.2 seconds to go. Barbara Bueller Lines is curator of the Georgia O'Kiffey Museum and author of Georgia O'Kiffey Catalog Raisonne. Oh, Georgia O'Keefe, my apologies. She visits IPFW this coming Thursday evening as the next Omnibus Lecturer. Ms. Lyons will address the topic of solving puzzles discovering O'Keefe. That's Barbara Buter Lyons this coming Thursday evening, November the 21st at 7.30 p.m. in the Wob Student Ballroom here at IPFW. Admission to the event and parking in the B-Lots is free to the public. And you would think after three volleyball matches and a basketball game, we would uh, get that right. Okay, back 70-66. Here we go, 53.2. 53 seconds to go. What does IPFW do? Full court pressure for one thing, and it's it's deny, deny, deny now. The Ostel, oh, there's a foul. They're going to call it on Amy Geralds. And Amy will foul out. But she fouls out 23 points. Yeah. The only plus to that is it only took one tick off the clock. She also had five rebounds and three assists. So a good effort from the junior from Beach Grove. But she is out. Geneva Murdoch is in. And back at the line, money in the bank in the person of Stephanie Hyde, who will shoot two. And Stephanie Hyde, leading scorer last year, 17.4 points a game. Also the leading rebounder for the Chargers, 6.2 rebounds a game. Lindy Carey coming in to the lineup to replace Ash, uh, Courtney Ash. Courtney, I can't get it right. <laughs> Nicely. <laughs> Nicely. Yes, I was going to say Icely, but that's just thinking about outside. Second free throw is also good by uh, Stephanie Hyde. She scored uh, six of the last seven, the last eight, rather, uh, Hillsdale points. The ball nearly knocked away. Taking a lot of time. Oh, my. A little hesitation. Traveling call. Turnover yeah. number 29 for IPFW. 
And you look on the floor, and again, you've got uh, four freshmen and one and a uh, sophomore, and and barely a sophomore. Thirty-five seconds to go, and another foul is going to be called on IPFW. Uh, Ashley Elmore will pick up the foul. Her second. Just under 35 seconds, so the shot clock's not going to be a factor here very soon. Again, Stephanie Hyde. Oh, she's human. She missed one. Important for IPFW to get a rebound on another missed shot here with 34.8 ticks of the clock. That was a big free throw because that makes it seven points, and that's at least three possessions for IPFW. 30 three. seconds to go. Carey stops. 14-footer off the rim. No. Fight for the rebound. Controlled by Hillsdale. We got a whistle on the floor. And another foul. I think the foul is going to be on Lindy Carey, and that's her fourth. 24.6 seconds left here. And it looks like, barring a miracle, Hillsdale is going to walk away with the uh, with a victory, preseason victory. Well, they're a very good team, and they're one of the better teams in uh, the GLIAC Conference of Division II up north in Michigan and Ohio. They are the uh, preseason pick to win it yeah. again in the Southern Division. Mm -hmm. Betsy Gerald misses the first, makes the second. Makes it 74-66. Murdoch. Elmore inside, feed. Fiara Bibbs off the glass and in. She's had a real solid game here today. She really has. She's got 14 points now. Under 10 seconds. Wieson just wants to dribble it out. Three seconds. Hyde will hold the ball in the last two seconds. And the buzzer goes off. In this contest, final score, Hillsdale 74, IPFW 68. Well, Mike, I think it's a kind of ball game where, as an exhibition preseason, that uh, both teams can benefit a lot. Uh, they could see what some of their younger people would do. It was a good ball game. It had a lot of turnovers, but that's not too un uh, unusual. Well, let's take a look now. We have a few moments left before we have to say goodbye. Let's take a look first at some of the numbers courtesy of Sports Information Director Mike Jewell for Hillsdale this afternoon. 23 of 50 from the floor for 46%. 9 of 15 from three-point range for 60%. And a coach always loves it when they can go anything better than 40% from three-point mm -hmm. range. They were 19 of 23 at the free throw line for 83%. They had four players in double figures. Stephanie Hyde led with 19 points. Betsy Gerald with 17 points. Mary Wieson and Jen Newsome with 13 apiece. Um, Caitlin Kennedy with six. Betsy Bean with five. And Gretchen Rocco with one. For IPFW, 24 of 60 from the floor. And you think back, they got off of that five out of six start. Yeah. But they were 24 of 60 from the floor for 40%. 7 of 27 for 26% from long ball, three-point range. 13 of 15 at the foul line. That's 87%, and that's one positive that Bruce Patterson Yeah, that's very good. Get. They had uh, three players in double figures. Amy Geralds with 23 points. Vieira Bibbs, sophomore with 14 points. And Lindy Carey, the freshman, with 10. Other Mastodon scoring. Ashley Elmore, the freshman, with six points. Hillary O'Connell, a freshman, with five points. Uh, Courtney Nicely and Tiara Dudley with four points apiece and Geneva Murdoch with two as we look at another replay. Some other numbers of note. Rebounding. IPFW out rebounded Hillsdale 32 to 27. Leading rebounder for the Dons. Fiara Bibbs with eight. Geneva Murdoch with six and Amy Geralds with five. For Hillsdale their leading rebounder was uh, Caitlin Kennedy with seven. Hyde and Newsome with five apiece. Um, assists, 13 for Hillsdale, 12 for IPFW. Turnover's a big story, Doc. IPFW turned the ball over 29 yeah. times as opposed to 21 for uh, Hillsdale. 29 turnovers is going to make it very difficult for you to win any kind of ball game. And off of those 29 turnovers, uh, Hillsdale converted that into 19 points, which is something to think about. 
Uh, IPFW did convert uh, Hillsdale turnovers into 17 points. As again, we look at a couple more replays. IPFW had three blocks and 10 steals. Hillsdale, two blocks and 12 steals. Um, points in the paint, believe it or not, tied at 14. Yeah, the, he saw me on TV. But uh, again, a preseason matchup, a chance for both what? coaches to get a good look at their yes. squads. Now let's look ahead a little bit. The season starts for real for IPFW a week from today. They travel up into Big Ten country to uh, Williams Arena at University of Minnesota, and they're going to take on the Golden Gophers, who, according, depending upon which poll, are ranked either 15th or 17th in the country. And uh, that's going to be a heck of a start, but they're going to play two games in Minnesota, and then come back on the day before Thanksgiving for the home opener oh. against Ferris State. Yeah, they've, uh, they've gotten things underway now, and it's, it's always good to get that first bit of action under your belt. They've done that. These freshmen now know that it's a little bit different game. Uh, they, they saw some things they could do, and they saw some things they need to work on. So that's what it's all about. Doc, as always, it's a lot of fun working with you. Enjoyed it. This time we want to thank the College 56 production crew, the IPFW athletic staff, the city of Fort Wayne, Comcast Cablevision, the IPFW Learning Resource Center, and especially the IPFW Office of University Relations and Communications for their contributions to this College 56 sports telecast. This telecast of IPFW Sports is copyrighted and the sole property of the College Cable Access Center and IPFW. Unauthorized duplication, exhibition, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this event without expressed written consent is strictly prohibited. We hope you've enjoyed our telecast of IPFW Sports and we thank you again for joining us today. For Dave Scout, and this is Mike Moss saying so long for now again. Final score this afternoon, Hillsdale College 72, I, uh, 74 rather, IPFW 68. We'll see you next week at the uh, Coliseum for the Vince home opener, and we'll see you on College 56 January 7th when IPFW takes on IUPUI. But until then, we will wish you a pleasant good afternoon from the Hilliard Gates Sports Center here on the campus of IPFW.